Is religion just used as a way to control the masses? I'm Sarah, and this is Conspiracy Central. Hi everyone, so today's topic is probably going to get a little bit touchy. You have been warned. And I just wanna start off by saying, believe in whatever you want to. I am not out here to tell you you're wrong because quite frankly, I have no clue myself. No one knows what really happens after we die, and if religion gives you some peace in that, I love that for you. But today I'm covering if we take a step away from that. We take a step back from faith and take a look at a different perspective. There are a lot of shady things about religion, but please do not come for me. I literally have crystals in my home, so I am in no place to judge. I don't think religion started out as a way to control. At the time, people wanted to make sense of the world. A great being controlling the weather and seasons made the most sense. But after a while, things started to change. We take a look at Karl Marx's critique. His main bone to pick is with capitalism and with a pretty good reason. In a capitalist society, it's all about the status quo and a ranking system. Some people hold a ton of power while others don't. The people at the very top abuse their power and exploit the working class to keep their status and gain even more wealth. Without the working class, they more than likely wouldn't be in their privileged position. So instead of putting people's best interest at the front, making money through any means possible takes over. Well, Marx argued that the wealthy used religion as yet another way to control the working class and keep them under their thumb. Marx often referred to religion as the soul of soulless conditions or the opium of the people. The full quote is, religion is the sigh of the oppressed creature, the heart of the heartless world, and the soul of the soulless conditions. It is the opium of the people. Much like how capitalism promises a big house, a nice car, and riches if you buckle down and work super hard, religion promises a wonderful afterlife if you dedicate your life to God. A wonderful afterlife regardless of all the trials and tribulations of your physical life in the present. When people started to think it through, these gods could be placeholders. God would be the ultimate authority. For example, the royal family. Kings were chosen by God as a vessel for the physical world. They used this divine right as a way to control others because, well, God said they could. Then the people with the most wealth, land, etc., became earls and viscounts who played landlords to little peasants. Sure, they provided housing, but without the workers, there would be no food, no goods, no nothing. So how do you get them to stay in line? Well introduce a belief system where the afterlife is picture perfect. No sickness, no hunger, you're never tired, your loved ones all living together in peace and harmony. It sounds like a dream. Religious leaders work directly with the monarchy. They get land and a way out of taxes. All they have to do is preach about how the king was chosen specifically by God. Especially in a time with no real law and order, obligatory religion is the closest thing to organization. If you instill fear inside of the masses, meaning if you do something wrong or disobey these specific rules, you will go to hell. People are more than likely going to stay in line and follow you and follow the rules. And monarchs go on power trips and they would go on mass killing sprees for people who chose to believe something else. Don't follow my rules. Don't conform to my way of thinking. Well, guess you're dead. And now you have everyone on your side. People are too terrified to not worship in the God that you've told them to. At this point, you can make your God say whatever you want. If you question them, well, how dare you question God? It's how a lot of cult leaders run their groups. There's one all-seeing, all-knowing member. They know when a disaster is on the horizon. They can heal people, and all because God said so. And they're charismatic, or they have really nice hair, so you believe them. And by that point, they got gotcha. you. They can decide what God says next, and you'd be a fool to question them. If you decide you wanna go against the grain, will your friends still like you? Will your family disown you? You wouldn't even wanna to try to test the possibility. And then we get on the topic of missionaries, traveling across the globe, teaching, or forcing your religion on people, depending on how you wanna look at it. It's all a way to get more people in the group. For example, priests and religious leaders murdered native people for refusing to take on new religion. Either you assimilate into our new culture, or you die. It's a terrifying choice. In medieval times, the Pope was considered the powerful and influential person of the whole planet. Due to the successful expansion of Catholicism and multiple crusades, religious military engagements supposedly in the name of reclaiming the Holy Land, the Pope was able to have massive influence over most of Europe as early as the 11th century. Many academics point to Pope Innocent III as peak of the papal influence. Innocent III was the Pope from 1198 to 1216, and under his leadership, he greatly extended the scope of the Crusades, including the Fourth Crusade of 1202 to 1204, which is most infamously known for the sack of Constantinople. 
The attack on Constantinople was not part of Pope Innocent's plan. However, he accepted the results because he believed it was God's will to reunite the Latin and Eastern Orthodox churches. The Pope's campaigns were so successful that the Byzantine Empire wouldn't reform until 50 years following his death. The Pope is still very powerful. Maybe not as powerful as he was back then, but powerful enough that it's a little touchy still talking about him. <laughs> so do I believe that all religious people are in cults? No, obviously not. If what you read helps you, who the hell am I to tell you that it's wrong? And we don't know what happens after we die. Death is scary. Not knowing what comes after is haunting, and religion can bring peace. You want to believe that once your physical form is no more, that your spirit can dance and sing with your friends, family, your favorite dog for all eternity. I mean, that sounds pretty nice to me. However, instilling a deep fear of making mistakes in life with the possibility of burning in hell for the rest of eternity is kind of terrifying. How do I know which religion is right? How do I know that the mistakes I made weren't that bad or bad enough to send me downstairs. We don't know. My main issue with religion is when it's used to pass judgment on other people or control what people do with their bodies, you know? Then I take an issue with it. But as long as you don't do that and you're all about loving thy neighbor as thyself, then I think it's all right with me. I grew up in a religious household, so I'm a little mm, when it comes to this kind of stuff, but it doesn't deter me from being around people who do believe in religion. Just please don't knock on my door. I'm not going to answer. Really, I don't agree with organized religion, but they, Kind of went off with those stained glass windows, I gotta say. Enough with this controversial topic. I wanna know what you think. Do you think religion is controlling? Do you disagree? Are you religious yourself? I'll talk to you all later. I'm Sarah, and this is Conspiracy Central. Bye!